and welcome back to another episode of The Stitch Sessions. We've got the holidays on the brain. And this week's project is tackling this really cute, adorable little angel cloak. Now, for those of you that have seen my Christmas crochet tour, you will have seen my sweet Buddha that's been turned into a Christmas angel. So what we're gonna do today is create the cloak that I made to turn the Buddha into an angel. I've also got some little angel wings back here and I'll show you how I uh, cut that out and created the template for that. And it's very straightforward. If you've got something around the house that maybe needs to be adorned and adjusted in a slightly different way, I think this is a great fix. It's very simple and uh, it's just got a little bit of detail around the edging here. And you can actually size this for a child. Like if you wanted to make this for a part of a costume, maybe a Christmas concert or something like that, this would work out really great. And I talk you through how to size up this garment. So this is made really for a doll or a smaller item, but you can certainly make this a little larger for a child or even for an adult if you really wanted to. And uh, if you've seen that tutorial I did on uh, raglan style tops and how to calculate your yoke, this would be comparable to how to create a round yoke. So a lot of great skills you're gonna use here for this project, but if you wanna keep it small, short, and sweet like me, it won't take you very long at all. And I'm very excited with how this came out. I just cinched it at the top with a, a sweet little ribbon there and put the angel wings on and we're ready to rock and roll. So let's get our materials together and let's just dive right into this project. Okay, so here are all the materials we're gonna need for our cloak. Now I made mine using crochet thread. This is um, super fine. It is from the Limal brand. It's imported from Portugal and it comes in 100 gram balls. It is 100% cotton. And uh, this is what people typically would use to create doilies and things like that. So it's very, very thin. Um, I would say this is pretty comparable to an Aunt Lydia's number 10 crochet thread. So if you wanna keep yours nice and small like I did and keep it very lacy and dainty, um, I would recommend using the crochet thread. If you want to size yours up just slightly, you can actually just use a medium four weight yarn and I've got this Aran Sparkle and right now with the holiday season, you can find a lot of yarn with the sparkle running through it. So um, you will notice the size difference by simply using different weights of yarn. So I'm gonna be using the crochet thread, but feel free to use and experiment with um, heavier weight yarns, okay? And so this would be considered a super fine zero, maybe a one, but probably not. And this comes in 100 grams, like I said, but you will definitely not use the whole thing. Now, because I'm using the crochet thread, the hook I'm gonna be using is a 3.25 millimeter hook, which is also known as a D or a size three. Hopefully you guys can see that. Okay, you'll also need to make sure you have a pair of scissors on hand and a trusty darning needle to sew in any ends. Now that's to create the cape itself. For any embellishments, you will need a little bit of ribbon to cinch it shut. That's what I use to close up the neckline. And uh, I just got this at the dollar store. This is uh, seven eighths of an inch wide. Okay, and you can use different colors, obviously. Uh, you may want to pick up some art wire. It's not very strong, but maybe if you wanna use this to affix the wings to it. I didn't end up using this, but you certainly can fasten on your wings with that. And speaking of wings, you will need to find yourself a wing template. I just downloaded this off of Google. And so you just wanna print it out, cut out the shape so that you can trace it onto your wing paper. Now I picked up this glitter paper sheet. It's got, it kind of feels like a little bit of a cardstock. And again, I picked this up at the dollar store. And so when you're ready to create your wings, you can just trace it on there, cut it out, and you're ready to fasten it onto your cloak. 
you may decide to use glue to fasten your wings on onto the cloak. If you've got hot hot glue gun, that works great too. I really like, like this stuff because it works on fabric as well as paper and it dries clear. So a lot of little moving parts here. And um, your, by the way, the size of your wings will depend on the size of your cloak. Now, mine is pretty much a doll size, so these wings came out really great, but you, you're just gonna have to experiment, print it out, cut it out, see how you like it. And if you are making this for a child or an adult, you may not need these wings, or maybe you'll find some wings at a party store or something like that. All right, so enough talking, let's get crocheting. Okay, so we are gonna begin with a slip knot and an initial chain row. So what you're gonna need to do is find out how many chains it's going to take you to get around the item's neck. So my little Buddha there, I chained up 35 chains. Now that allowed for the chain to come around the neck and just slightly overlap. So that is what we're gonna start with today. So you wanna begin by placing a slip knot on your hook. And I'm gonna chain up 35. Okay, I have 35 chains. Okay, so I have something that looks like this. Now, I should have prefaced before I started the chain that the cloak is created using a round yoke. So for those of you that have seen my crochet quick chat all about uh, raglan type of items, we talked a little bit about the round yoke and I would recommend you to kind of quickly go over there and check out that video. It's all, it's a lesson all about how to size the yokes. And um, I think it's gonna be a really great useful tool for future projects as well. But you will remember that I had mentioned you generally want to chain as close as possible to multiples of 10 when you're using a round yoke. So I have 35 but no worries because if you have a couple left over it's not a big deal but that will come into consideration when we start doing our increases so you want to keep that number 10 in mind so i have 35 but i am going to add three more chains because we're going to be using double crochet stitches so i'm going to add an additional one two and three okay and then right now, all we're gonna do is we're gonna create our first row, which is a row of double crochet stitches. So we're gonna count one, two, three, and four. And into the fourth chain from your hook, remember you never count the loop on your hook, you're gonna place a double crochet stitch. Okay, just like that. And that is what you're gonna do into each and every single chain all the way to the end of your row. So nice and easy, pretty straightforward into each and every chain. Just like that, okay? So go ahead and finish row one and I'll meet up with you to move on to the next row. At the end of row one, you will have something that looks like this, okay? Now we're ready to move on to row two. And in row two, we're gonna create our eyelet row. And that is where you're gonna be able to lace your ribbon through to cinch in the top. So we're going to chain four to begin. Two, three, and four, and this chain four is gonna count as a double crochet chain one. You're then gonna turn your work, and you're going to skip the very next stitch. So this stitch right here is the base of our chain, so we're not working into that one. The next stitch is right there, and the stitch next to that is there. That is the stitch we're gonna be working into. So you will place a double crochet into there. Then you're going to chain one, skip the next stitch and into the following stitch, place a double crochet. 
And this is basically your repeat for this row. You will chain one, skip a stitch, and into the following stitch, you will double crochet. Chain one, skip a stitch, and double crochet. So you can see your eyelets are being formed very nicely. And that's it. So for row two, go ahead and do that. And then I will meet back up with you to begin row three. Okay, and at the end of your row two, you still have one more stitch. So you just skip, you chained one, skipped a stitch, double crocheted. You have one more stitch left. We're just gonna go ahead and double crochet into the top of that chain three. Okay, and this is just, again, we are customizing this to a particular item. So at the end here, you've got two double crochets and at the beginning, you've got your chain three and chain one. Okay, so that is the end of row two. So your work looks like that. Now we're gonna go on to a row number three, okay? And we're going to chain three, one, two, three. You're gonna turn your work. And this is another row of all double crochet stitches. So you're going to find the very next stitch and place a double crochet. And where you see the spaces, the chain spaces, you can work into the chain or you can work into the space. So you still wanna end up with our 35 stitches at the end of row three. So the next one would be a stitch, which would be right there. Double crochet. And the next one is a space. So I'm gonna work into that space. The next one would be a stitch. And so you really wanna keep in mind that it's only one double crochet into each space. I know it looks like you can fit more in there, but that will increase the number of stitches. So there you can see now the eyelets are really showing through. And that's all you're gonna do. So row three, one double crochet into each stitch, and I'll meet back up with you to begin row four. Okay, and I'm just gonna take you through the last little space here. So I have my chain four that I did at the beginning. So I'm gonna do a double crochet into the space. And then I wanna find the top of the third chain, which is right there. And I'm gonna insert my last double crochet in there. And that way I maintain the proper stitch count. There we go. So at the end of row three, you have something that looks like that. So it's very lacy. It's got the eyelets running through it. So this is basically what, what will form the collar. Oops, it'll be this way, to go around the neck, okay? And now we're gonna work on the body. And so what we need to do now is we're gonna work on increasing our stitches so that it creates a little bit of a flare. So remember you have the neck and then we need to go over the shoulders before it starts to drape down. So we need to increase the number of stitches we have in order for the garment to sit nicely over the shoulders. So remember that number 10 divisible by 10? You're gonna take the number of stitches you have and divide it by 10. So I happen to have 35 stitches. When you divide that by 10, it's 3.5. So not a great number to work with. That's gonna leave us with five stitches left over, but we're not gonna worry about that. What we're gonna do is we are going to chain three to begin. One, two, and three. You're gonna turn your work and we're gonna place a double crochet into the first two stitches, okay? So we have a double crochet and a double crochet there. So technically we have crocheted three stitches. Now remember 35 divided by 10 is 3.5. That means we've got five stitches left over from our even number of 30. So what I've done is I've taken the 
three of those stitches and I've placed them right at the beginning, okay? And then at the end, you will have the other two left over just to kind of even out where our increases are. Um, if you're just following along strictly with me and that doesn't quite make sense, don't worry about it. But if you are creating your own garment, your own sizing, that concept is important to grasp. So again, if it'll help, make sure to watch that lesson all about creating your own yoke. But for now, we've got three double crochets there and we're gonna do our first increase. So you're gonna yarn over and into the very next stitch, you will place two double crochets. Okay, and that will be our, whoops, our first increase. Okay, so two stitches in one. Um, if it's easier for you to find, make sure you place a stitch marker in all of your increases. I'm pretty good at being able to tell, like I can see that that's, these are all one individual stitch and that little V there is where my increase is, okay? So if we have 35, we take out the five and 30 divided by 10 is three. So we know into every third stitch, we will be doing an increase. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna place one double crochet into each of the next two stitches. And then in the third stitch, we're gonna place our increase. So we've got one and we have two right back into that same stitch. See that? And then so you can see one increase there and there's the next one. And so you're gonna repeat this now all the way to the end of your row. So you will do two double crochets, one next to each other, and then in the third one, you'll do an increase. Two, increase, two, increase, two, increase, all the way to the end. You should end up having 10 increases by the end of row four, okay? So again, one double crochet, two double crochets, and then our increase into the third. And so I'm gonna leave you to repeat that all the way to the end of row four until you have five stitches left. So after your last increase, you wanna have five stitches left. And I'll meet back up with you when we're ready to move on to row five. Okay, so I've come to the end of row four and I've just finished my last increase. So you can see where all the increases are and I have five stitches left. So now into the last five stitches, I'm just gonna place one double crochet into each. And so that is the leftover stitches I have from my stitch count, okay? And then there's the top of my chain three and I place, whoops, a double crochet in there. Okay, and I have now completed row four and you can see a little bit, the garment is starting to flare out a little bit. So we went from 35 stitches, we should now have 45 stitches. So remember we placed 10 increases here so that means we increase the number of stitches by 10, okay? So moving on to row five, you are now going to repeat this uh, system, I guess we'll call it, for several more rows. So this is how you're gonna start the next few rows. So this is how you're gonna start row five. You're gonna chain three, one, two, Three. you'll turn your work and now you're just gonna place one double crochet into each stitch until you see your first increase so we have double crochet there double crochet double crochet in the next one so remember we did five stitches at the end so that's four this is where, again, if you're a little newer, uh, 
placing stitch markers in all of your increases will help you. But see there, I can see there's an increase there. So instead of going into the stitch, I'm gonna go in between these stitches and I'm gonna place two double crochets. So I'm placing an increase inside an increase. And then the very next stitch I wanna go into is right there, okay? So then I place one double crochet, two, and then three. So now you're gonna notice that in between each increase, you're gonna have three stitches. So in the previous round, or the, sorry, the previous row, we only had two stitches. So that's what you're gonna find, uh, you'll notice as you progress in rows, is the number of stitches between the increases will increase, and that's what creates the need for your fabric to flare. So now you can see I have another increase. I'm gonna go right in between there, place one double crochet, go back in and place a second double crochet. Okay, just like that. So you're placing increases inside of increases really straightforward, okay? At the end of row five, you will now have 55 stitches. You're gonna keep repeating this method for row six, seven, eight, and nine, okay? And I'll put a little bit of a, a list here up on the screen. So at the end of row five, you're gonna have 55 stitches. At the end of row six, you're gonna have 65 stitches. Row seven will have 75, row eight will have 85, and lastly, row nine is gonna have 95 stitches. Now, for my project, that created the flare that was just enough to start drooping over the shoulders. If you're creating this for a child or even an adult, you might want to do a few more rows of increases so that it drapes right over before you stop increasing. For this project, I'm stopping after row nine, okay? So you're gonna pause the video, you're gonna do row five, six, seven, eight, and nine with your increases, and I'll meet back up with you to talk about row 10 and the rest of the body of our cape. Okay, I have completed nine rounds in total. I still have 95 stitches and my work is looking like this. So now you can see it's really creating that rounded effect, which is gonna drape over nicely. Now, as I always say, if you end up having 96 stitches or 94 stitches, it's not the end of the world. You're generally gonna still create the shape we're looking for. So what happens now is you would try this on if you're making this for you know a child or for a doll. Um, you would try this on, and at this point, this is what your work is gonna look like. So when I turn that over so you can see there's the collar and there's how it flares out, okay? And if you were creating a raglan style cardigan, for example, this is exactly the same method we would use, okay? So now I know that for me on my Buddha, right about here is where it starts to droop over the shoulders. And for me, that's plenty because it's just gonna be a cloak. It's not gonna be um, a cardigan or anything like that. So now all we're gonna do is for row 10, from row 10 to 21, you're simply gonna place one double crochet into each stitch. So we're no longer gonna do any more increases. Now, if I hold this up close here, you should be able to see where all the increases fell in nicely together, okay? So to start row 10, you're going to chain three, one, two, three, turn your work, and into the very next stitch, you will begin placing one double crochet, and this is what you're gonna do for several rows into each stitch. No more increasing here and you're just gonna continue along the way there until you get the length that you need, okay? So in my example, I'm doing this for that Buddha statue there. So I know that I need 21 rows that are gonna give me the length that I need to cover up the statue. 
If you're doing this for a doll that's standing, for example, you may need a, a longer length. And again, if you're making this life-size for a child or for an adult, you will just continue doing as many uh, rows as you need to create the length that you desire. So that's it. So I'm gonna leave you there now to do rows 10 to 21, one double crochet into each stitch. And then I'll meet back up with you to talk about the final round of our cloak. And we're just gonna do a really pretty puff stitch finishing round. So I'm gonna set you off and I'll meet back up with you when we're ready to do the finishing round. Okay, I have completed my 21st row and now you can see it's definitely taking on that cloak shape. So if I just open this up, your work is gonna look something like this. You can see that's where the increases are. And it's it does that because it's designed to drape over you or the item you're making it for. So this is the little collar here. So when you fold it over, there is your little cloak or cape. And so you can see the collar there. And so all we have to do now is do our border. And I just did this with a very simple little mini puff stitch uh, border. And I just love the effect that it came. So that is the only thing we have left to do um, on this cloak. So let's take you through. This is row number 22. So what you're going to do is you're actually going to chain three. and turn your work. And we're gonna work a puff stitch into each stitch. And in fact, we're gonna go right back into this stitch that we just came out of. So technically the chain three is not even going to count. It's just gonna give us the height that we need. So you're gonna yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitch, pull up a loop and stretch it up to the height of that chain three, okay? Then you're gonna yarn over again, and I like to secure that with my index finger here. You're gonna insert your hook back into that same stitch, pull up another loop. And then you're gonna yarn over one more time and do the same thing again. And pull up a loop. So all together you have two, four, six, seven loops on your hook. You will then yarn over and pull through six of the seven loops. So you have two loops left, and then you'll yarn over and pull through the last two. And that is a puff stitch. Now I call it the mini puff stitch because I only yarned over three times. A lot of times a full puff stitch, people can yarn over up to five times. That gives you a nice big puff, but I just chose to keep it a little bit more moderate. Okay, so that's what you're gonna do into every single stitch. So let's do that again. You're gonna yarn over, insert into the next stitch, pull up a loop so you have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull up the next stitch so you have five loops on your hook. You will yarn over one more time, back into that same stitch, pull up a loop, and now you have your seven loops on your hook. Okay, you will then yarn over one last time, pull through six of the seven loops. So you have two left, you'll yarn over and pull through the last two. And that is what we're gonna do all the way around the edging of this cloak. So right up the sides, around the collar and back down to the trim, okay? So you can see it's just creating that nice little, I find that using this stitch gives it just, it anchors the trim down a little bit. So you're pretty much good to go. You're gonna do that in every single stitch all the way around. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna meet back up with you once you get to that first corner there, just to talk you through how you're gonna go around your corners, okay? So press pause on the video and you've got a lot of puff stitches coming up and I will meet you back here shortly. Okay, so I've done my last puff stitch from the bottom row and you can see it just creates that really nice texture there for a trim, love that. For those of you that actually were following along with our Year of the Bride series for 2020, 
Our very first project in January was actually a bridal capelet, a winter capelet, and we strictly used the puff stitch and it just creates such a cozy, cushy texture. I just love it. And um, I'll actually leave a link for that in the description box down below if you ever wanna check that out. But this is the stitch we used. Now, we've come up to the corner here and we just wanna round the bend. So what we're gonna do is in that last stitch, we're gonna place a total of three puff stitches. So I've already placed one. So I'm gonna place my second one. So there is seven loops. Pull through. Okay, and now I'm gonna place one more right back into that same stitch. So what this does is it just helps you to curve around that corner. There we go. So you can see it's just working right around the corner. And now we're gonna work up along the side, which is the inner edging of the cloak leading up to the collar. It's pretty straightforward. Now, these were all double crochets. So traditionally speaking, when we're working into the side of a double crochet, you can fit two stitches into the side of each stitch and it will sit still nice and evenly. So we're gonna go into the bottom of this first stitch here. So there's a space right there. And you might have to eyeball this a bit to make sure that it looks like it's sitting evenly to you because sometimes it's harder to see where you should place your stitches in the sides. Okay, so there's that one. And then in the next area, I'm gonna go here. This is the bottom of that double crochet. So I'm gonna go into there to do a puff. Pull that through. And now I'm gonna go somewhere in the middle here. Now you can certainly go into the space. I generally try to work into the loops of that stitch just so that there isn't too much of a gap there in the space. So I'm working that puff into that area there. And uh, it does take a little bit of patience and if it really bothers you, you can just work into the space, but I like to work into the loops if I can. Okay, and there's the next puff stitch. Okay, so there you go. So you can really see it's worked its way around and now I'm working into the sides of stitches. So generally speaking, I'm gonna work one into the bottom of the stitch and then one in the middle. See, bottom of the next stitch and then the middle. I'm gonna do that all the way up. So for example, I know I had 21 rows in total and if I put two stitches into the side, that means I'm gonna have 42 stitches all the way up from the corner all the way up to the collar, okay? Again, pretty straightforward. But what's gonna happen here, once we get past this corner, I'm actually gonna change the stitch pattern for just the collar, okay? And that's what creates that little bit of a puffy collar. So go ahead and do the puffs, two puffs into the side of each double crochet all the way up to the top. Do your corner, you'll do the uh, three stitches into that corner. And then I'm gonna talk you through what we're gonna do just slightly differently along the top. Okay, so I've just finished placing three puff stitch in this corner stitch here. So I've gone up the side now, come around from the bottom. Now we're ready to work on the collar. And I just wanted to give a few extra stitches to the collar to just um, add a little subtlety, almost like a little ruffle, very, very subtle. So what we're gonna do is in the very first stitch, right there, we're gonna place a puff stitch. So we have one, two, and three, okay. And now in the next stitch, we're gonna place two puffs into that stitch. So into every second stitch, we are gonna basically do an increase. And this will cause your edging up here to ripple a little bit. That's what we wanna go for. So there was one stitch there. Now we've done one and we're gonna go back into the same stitch to do our second puff. It's two and that is 
three. Okay, so we've got one stitch, we've got two. And that's what we're gonna repeat. We're gonna do one in the next one. So we're gonna find that next stitch there. Now this is going back to working your initial foundation chain. So you may notice that the stitches are a little bit tighter here. So just keep that in mind. So there's one puff and then there is two going into the next. So that's three times looping up and then one more time into the same stitch and that's gonna be our second puff. And there you go, okay? So you're gonna do two, one, two, one, two, one, all the way down. And then you're just gonna do what you've done before. Once you get to that corner, the last one in the corner, you're gonna place three puffs into that stitch and then you're gonna work down the side and you'll pretty much meet back up to where you started, okay? Now here you'll have to place two stitches into this last one because remember that was the beginning and that will give us the three stitches there to round off at the end. You're then gonna slip stitch to join, snip your yarn and your cloak is actually complete. Okay, so go ahead and finish that. And then we're just gonna talk about the little embellishments that we're gonna add to actually create the angel look. Okay, I have finished weaving in my ends and my final border is complete. So you can see this really pretty textured edge. I just love it. It's simple, but it just adds a little something. So we've got our collar done here. And so the cloak itself is complete. And I just love how that lacy effect comes through because of the yarn we used. So now what we need to do is just place a ribbon through these eyelets in the collar. And that's what's gonna sash the cloak shut. So this is where my ribbon comes into play. And you're just gonna need Oh, about 18 inches or so. I like it really long because I want to do a big bow. So I'm going to do something like that. You can always cut the extra off if you need to. Okay, so what you want to do is, for me, I want to make sure that my ends come out from the eyelet. And so I'm just going to weave it in and out, in and out. So I'm actually going to start by pushing the end of this ribbon in, okay? So that way my end will be coming out of here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to skip a space and then go into the next space and bring that out. Now, if you wanna go into every single space, you can. Um, but I am choosing to do it this way. Now you may be thinking that this ribbon is actually too thick or too wide for these eyelets. Um, it's totally up to you. You can use it slightly thinner, but see how it just gives it that little curl. I like that look, so that's why I'm going with this width. So then you skip the next space and into the following space, now you're going to push it in. So it's gonna take you a little bit because you have to push and pull it in. You can certainly use a hook to do this, um, but whatever is comfortable for you. So that is basically what we have there, just like that. Now, you don't have to use white, by the way. You can use a contrasting color. I just like the whole idea of it being all one color because I'm using the cloak for uh, my little angel figurine. Now, if you're making this a little bit more life-size, like for a child, uh, or even an adult, you can embellish it any which way you like. You can change up the colors, you can do a different color in the trim, whatever is your fancy. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finish weaving this in and out and in and out, and I will meet you at the end, and then we'll talk about moving on to creating our wings. Okay, now I just wanted to show you guys a little something. I've got a couple of eyelets left, so when I skip the next one, I'm going in, and remember I said I wanted both of my ends to come out. So if I do this inward, it's gonna come out through the inside. So 
little thing you do if you don't have an even number of eyelets is instead of skipping this one, I'm not going to skip it. I'm actually just going to insert it into that eyelet and then push it back out the very last one and I will get the effect that I am looking for. Just like that. Okay, so now see, now it really takes on a little bit more of that cloak look. So now I just kind of push it through. I just want to make sure they're relatively even, the sides. Okay, and now I can close up the cloak. Just stretch that out a little bit. And now I can tie up my bow. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my little Buddha and I'm actually going to wrap it around, do a little test dressing there, and then tie my bow. Okay, so here is my Buddha with the angel cloak. So now technically it's my angel. So that ribbon was plenty. So after I do my bow, it still was long enough to come right down to the edge, which I love. And uh, it does flare out a little bit, which is it is want to do. So I'm pretty happy with that. If you wanted to create something much longer so that it actually drapes right to your surface, you can do that too. But I am super happy with how he came out. And I love the way that the collar came out with that beautiful puff stitch detail there. I just think it's fantastic. So now our angel is almost there. The thing we're missing are wings. And so the wings are really super easy. We're just gonna cut out a little bit of silver paper and stick it onto the back and our angel is ready to go. So let's get to it. Okay, so this is where our craft paper comes into play. I've got glitter paper sheets and I found this at the dollar store. So it has silver, it has gold, it's got a sparkly pink and a sparkly blue. So what you need to do is you need to go on to the interwebs and just Google a angel wing template or an outline. So I found an, a template that I liked. And what I did is I actually imported it into my Word program. And I mean, you can do this into any graphics program, or if you guys have Canva, you can probably find a nice template. But Google's just as easy, because we're not really using this, we're just using it to outline. And when I placed it in Word, I could kind of expand the uh, size of it or contract it. So I just stretched it a little bit, and I was very happy with this size. And it's, it's a little bit of trial and error. So you're going to then print it out and you're going to cut out the template. Now you can see mine has designs in the center for the, the feathers of the wings, but I don't really need that, right? I just need the shape. So you're going to cut out the shape. And as you can see, I've already made uh, one set. So I've got that here. So I used my silver paper. Now I'm actually going to do a second one because I want it to be silver on the back as well because this angel is going to sit against a mirror and you guys that have seen my crochet tour um, will have seen that I have this angel sitting in front of the mirror on my faux mantle. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do that now. So I'm going to take a glitter sheet here and I got all excited. I start to trace it ahead of time and then I remembered I got to show you guys. So. Here we go. So you're gonna have your uh, glitter paper or whatever kind of paper you wanna use. And you're gonna place your template on there. So I'm just gonna make sure that I put mine where I started. And so for this particular paper, I really made sure to use a marker so that it would show up. And all you're gonna do is you're just gonna trace the outline of your template. Now make sure that you do get it on the paper or the glitter paper and not just on your template because I've done that before you can see where the black markings are where I ended up just coloring on the paper and not getting it onto the glitter paper and every once in a while just lift it and there we go so it is coming through nicely and then I just trace it all the way around 
Okay, and I continuously lift it to make sure it is being traced. So I'm pretty happy with that. And you're gonna do that all the way around until you get the shape of your wings. And then when you're done that, you're just going to cut out your shape. Oh, see, it's coming up, it's, I'm missing a little bit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish tracing this and then we'll be ready to cut it. Okay, so I'll lift that up, perfecto. Okay, so there are my wings and now all I have to do is cut this out. So I'm very, very excited. And so you see how there's those little ridges? You do wanna make sure that you get all of those because that's what gives it the effect of the angel wings. Now you also wanna try your best to actually cut the black marking off. I mean, for me, that's, that's my preference. Some people actually might like the black outline on, but it's all personal preference. So I'm just gonna gently cut around there. And then our angel is just about done. So see how that's coming out? So I'm gonna go ahead and finish cutting this and then we'll be able to put the final touch onto our angel. Okay, so I have cut out my wings and now all it is is to attach it to our angel. And I'm gonna show you a little secret. And that is this. I simply just take my wings, see how this glitter paper is a little bit rough on it? And all I do is I just find the spot where I want his wings to sit and I just kind of nestle it in against his back. And voila, <laughs> the wings stick. <laughs> so that's the little trick I use now because I'm not moving him around a lot. I'm pretty happy with that. So it just sits nicely and because the roughness of that glitter paper is a little bit rougher. It tends to stick to the, uh, the cloak. So that's pretty much it. Now you can certainly hot glue this, um, onto your cloak. You can sew it. Um, you can tape it, you can do all kinds of things. For storage purposes, I kind of like the fact that I can take this off and then it can lay flat and it lessens the risk of this getting crumpled up over time when it gets put away. Now, if you are making this life-size, like maybe you are making this for a child, maybe they're in the nativity play, um, and you are obviously gonna use a larger piece of card stock or something like that, um, or maybe you are actually gonna sew it. If you're handy with sewing, you can create your own wings with wire, then obviously you're gonna sew it to your, um, to your cloak or find some other way to fashion it. But because again, this is for my little Buddha slash angel, I kept it very small and easy. So there you have it. There is the angel cloak, a really fun, quick way to turn what you've got into what you need. So I took my Buddha and I took him from a Buddha and I changed him into a little angel just for the season. So I hope you found that super fun and crafty to do and um, a really fun Christmas crochet crafting project. If you have any questions, please do leave it in the comment box down below for me. As always, if you want to, you can reach me directly at info at crochetcrafty.com and you can also find me on all the socials on Facebook and Instagram at the Stitch Sessions. And actually, I love when you guys reach out to me on Instagram and tag me in some of the projects that you've created using my designs. I'm always curious to see your color choices or how you use the design. So please do uh, tag me on your projects and uh, say hello, stop in, all that good stuff. And if you haven't uh, pressed that subscribe button, I invite you to do so. Come hang out with me. I upload a new crochet tutorial every Wednesday morning. And sometimes I throw up some bonus videos along the way, especially around the holiday season like now. So there'll be a few extra videos coming your way. And as always, have an amazing day. Happy holidays, happy crocheting, take good care of yourselves, stay healthy and well, and I will see you in the next session. Bye-bye.